Welcome to Podcast Across Worlds, where we like to read a lot of manga, watch a lot of anime, and talk about it for hours. I'm your host, Lehua Superfina. And I'm your co-host, Mikhail Casanova. What's up, everybody? Today, we are going to talk about Trigun Stampede. Season 1 on Crunchyroll just finished. It was amazing. Mikhail Casanova, he actually did a video review. He wants to talk about it on Paul. Love and peace. For those who remember the original <laughs> show, Vash used to do that. Anyways. <laughs> I forgot about that. Well, why was he doing that again? Wasn't he doing it with someone else, like a kid? Yeah, well, he, he constantly would do that in multiple episodes where he would, like, do love and peace. He's like, I'm not a fighter. I'm not a killer. I'm a lover. And basically everything he did was to make people think he was stupid, even though it would, you know, defuse a lot of situations. Mm -hmm. We don't get that in, in Stampede. And you don't get that in um, Trigon or Trigon Maximum. So that's pretty much an anime or ni 1998 anime only. I see. It works. It works, but yeah. So... Why don't we talk about what we liked about Trigon Stampede? Okay. Because it was great. And I feel like not a lot of people talk about it. But Stampede? Trigon Stampede. I mean, that, that's like the trending thing right now on, on YouTube. There's a lot of videos that popped up. But were they talking about it before? No. no. Uh, that's what I'm talking That's what I'm trying to say. No, yeah, they they were not talking about it beforehand. They, um, I think a lot of people, and and I believe I said this in my video when I was talking about the whole thing. I feel like a lot of people wrote off Trigun Stampede because the initial thing that we saw of it was it was three D animation, and a lot of people don't, for whatever reason, people don't like. 3D animation, I, I feel like a lot of people look at 3D animation as like a negative. And the, the talking point that I always see people bring up is Berserk 2016, which you and I watched. We liked it. Yeah, we liked it. I mean, it was one of the first I've seen. I know I've seen CG and regular anime combination before, and I, it didn't really appeal to me. But as I kept watching Berserk, it was growing on me. And I was like, yeah, this works. This is good. Yeah, because you were more, like, you were drawn into the story. Yeah, yeah. So I kind of overlooked that. And the more I saw the visual, the more it grew on me. And I was like, not as bad as I thought. Maybe it just took me a while to adjust to change. Yeah, and, you know, like, a lot of people just wrote it off. I, I can admit that it wasn't the best CG we've ever seen. <laughs> in an anime, I, if if we're gonna be completely honest, the Berserk Golden Age movies were better CG than the TV show, but that's mm -hmm. probably because they had a much larger budget to work with. Yeah, in comparison to the the actual TV show, but I mean we've seen CG in other things, and I know this is a t this is legitimately like when I go on Twitter and I see a lot of people talking about anime, they legitimately don't like cg at all they they're like we want pure hand-drawn animation mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. i get the argument for it but what i see that a lot of people don't seem to understand is that's expensive for one yep it takes a long time to do yeah and the reason you see so many shows like cut out stuff is because of how expensive that is. Whereas you do CG animation, which in the way that it's done with uh, Trigon Stampede, it's cell shaded CD CG animation, which means they're not just doing hand, you know, like taking the 3D models and hand animating them themselves. You can tell with a lot of the movements, there is the motion capture. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so what they can do is they do the motion capture they have the motion capture model, then they can layer over it the CG model, and then layer over that the cell shading with the anime set. Because there are some times when you're seeing 
Vash and company move around in the show. And it can go between looking like CG and looking like anime. But it's the same method that Arc System Works has been using with Guilty Gear from Guilty Gear Exard, which was the first um, fighting game and basically mainstream game to use that style back in 2014, initially showed off in 2013. We've seen it in Dragon Ball Fighters, mm-hmm. Guilty Gear Strive. We've seen it in Grand Blue Fantasy Versus. And it's also been done, like I think I previously mentioned, it was done in the Berserk uh, anime, uh, the Golden the golden Age uh, movies, which were phenomenal. So it, it's a lot of people just literally wrote off Trigon Stampede because they the initial showing of the show of that they were even doing a new trigon was showing vash in his old style mm-hmm. it, 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 and it didn't really allude to it being a continuation or a remake we didn't know what it was we just knew the title and then when they started showing off what vash looked that's when people started having all the major issues with it. yeah people are going into little details like to his hair yeah. Oh, he looks like Machine Gun Kelly. Yeah, and it's like, it's not that serious. If the story is still good, if the animation is still great, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> but they did show like a dramatic sequence of when his hair does change. Yeah, and, and that was the thing that was funny is like when we got to the point where they showed the change to his hairstyle and his Mm -hmm. overall look that was kind of a surprise because we literally thought we were gonna get the new modern look for Vash and then they that happened we're like oh he's got his old look back Uh Uh (laughs) uh-huh then they started incorporating but then I even saw people complain they're like well why is he a black you know black Side, well, not sideburns, but like uh, ta- tapered edges on his hair. I'm like, well, he already had that in his default look for the show, mm-hmm. but specifically with his older style look. This goes into what I said in, in the video I did. A lot of people who claim to be Trigun fans, mm-hmm. they're not. They're fans specifically of the old anime. They're not and and it makes sense. I don't fault people for not really because you know I've had conversations with people like, "Hey, you ever read Trigon Maximum?" They're like, "What? What's that?" They don't know what that is, and it makes sense. Trigon Maximum ran from nineteen eighty eight to two thousand eight. Okay, yeah. But Trigon originally, the first manga came out ninety five ninety six, and by the time of the original anime, it already been canceled for several years. So Maximum came in and uh, Night Owl was able to get another publishing company. Then he decided, okay, I'm just going to go with a whole different style. He changed the way Vash looks. That's why Vash, if you look at his um, Maximum look, he looks substantially different than he does. And, you know, that's that's what he looks like. And this is that new outfit I was talking about. Mm. So it's very okay. different than what we just get in the, uh, the typical... 98 anime but yeah so a lot of people didn't like the new look they didn't like the direction and you know we've seen people on my facebook yeah your facebook (laughs) on my facebook people writing off the show after watching three episodes i don't know how you can write the show off in three episodes when uh by episode two a lot's already happening in Genora Rock. Mm-hmm. And then you already have more stuff go on to by the time of episode three. That's when we get introduced to Knives and Genora Rock gets destroyed. Now, I've seen people also say that Genora Rock that got destroyed by Knives is exclusive to Stampede, which is untrue because Genora Rock is in the original manga. And it's also within the original anime. Because what do you think the Nebraska brothers, like, when they brought them in? 
So it, it's just interesting when I'm hearing these arguments against the show and it's from very uninformed people. Like, okay, it's fine. Have your opinion. I don't care. Speak your piece. But don't speak like you're speaking facts when you don't mm-hmm. know what the hell you're talking about. Like, don't, 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 don't talk lore with me if you ain't... You, look, you need to bring the Bible if you're going to talk lore with me. Come on. And just don't be a Debbie Downer about it. People are excited. And you just threw these, quote, facts, quote, raining on the parade when it's not necessary. <laughs> so, what is Trigon Stampede about, Mikhail? We're talking about the story like everybody knows. Anyway, so Trigon Stampede is basically, uh, it's a retelling of the original Trigon and Trigon Maximum manga, as well as the original 98 show. And it's about a character that's known as the humani- blah, 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 humanoid typhoon, the man with the $60 billion double dollar bounty. Except for in this show, it's the $60 million double dollar bounty. And this is... No, you were a little mad about that. Initially. I was initially mad about that. But they they... As KOF 15 said, they shattered all expectations. <laughs> Anyways, so basically, Vash Stampede, who is the main character, he's a blonde, tall gunslinger. And basically, he's an outlaw in a way. He's got this reputation for destroying. You know, he's basically a walking calamity wherever he goes. That's what he's referred to in the manga. Humanoid Typhoon. Humanoid Typhoon, a.k.a. The Walking Calamity. Mm -hmm. And so you hear this reputation for him, and then you see him, and you're like, hey, this doesn't really add up. Yeah, this goofball? You're like, this guy? (laughs) And they they always make it a point to show, like, he's a bit of a goofball, but then there's, you start to see that his goofball mentality or uh, antics and actions are basically a way to subvert you from realizing he's actually a lot smarter and more aware of things than you would expect him to be. Mm -hmm. So when he does that, usually he does that when something serious or life-threatening is going on. And so it's done to distract people. So I don't know if people have ever watched the uh, movie Lucky Number 11. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. I can watch... I've. I think one day I literally watched that movie 10 times straight and I never got tired of it. Lucky number 11, go watch it. But the reason I bring that up is because there is a term used in it and it's called the Kansas City Shuffle. And basically the Kansas City Shuffle is to make everyone look left while you go right. Yeah, I did that. So basically it's a it's a subversion technique and he does that constantly to protect people minimize casualties as best he can and injuries and in his method of doing that he gets hurt a lot now the original show i I think kind of showed him getting hurt a lot but like the new show and the manga really show he got he gets messed up like physically he's his body is wrecked but yeah so so that's the story that you want people to know about trigon stampede I mean, if we also want to dive into the fact he's uh, he looks human, but he's really what's called a plant. He's an interdimensional man-made being that is able to literally, in this, if you think of the term plant, it's a energy. Like you think of plants, they, they, they create energy, right? Like they, they're, you get your resources. And that's literally what plants were made to do is to be, independent self-sufficient things that can generate energy electricity water food flora fauna to not and if you really dive further into the manga it's the, the deeper purpose of it is so that we stop using oil and you know it's a very echo echo conscious reason that humanity developed this technology mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and so vash and his twin brother knives are plants but they are plants that look human. They act like you, or they look human. They talk like humans, but they're not human. So they're in many ways immortal. And 
pretty much a big threat to humanity if they ever went rogue, which is what Dives is. But uh, humanity went out into space to literally find another planet and, and colonize the, the, the solar system because they had left earth in a very derelict position it was drained of resources is almost about to be a barren rock so they left out and they sent fleets in all different directions of the world uh, of out from planet earth to find and you know um colonize different planets and so by doing that um they're in space for hundreds of years and eventually Knives and Vash, Vash unintentionally, cause one of the migrant fleets to crash land on a planet. Now, in this show, they're called a no man's land. It's technically gun, uh, planet Gunsmoke. And they land on this barren planet that is basically a desert oasis. It's just completely just sand all over it. And so they as humanity is there they're using these plants to make it habitable or a better way to would think a bit a better way to look at it is terraforming the planet so that it's hospitable to humanity so creating air you know oxygen all that mm -hmm. water resources and all that but there are already beings that lived on a planet called worms that are like a high in, in highly intelligent uh, species, but we can get into that later on. But that's yeah. basically humanity stranded on this planet. They got plants; they're trying to survive. And you've got two independent plants. That one is basically a savior. The other one just wants to kill everybody. Nice, nice, great explanation. So, what I liked about Dragon Stampede is. It really showcased Vash's background from the beginning, from the first episode. Yeah. Because when you first watch like the original anime, it's kind of a comedy and it just seems like this guy who just runs into trouble everywhere he goes. He has a worse look. Worse <laughs> look. And... Um, you just think that he's this guy who believes in justice, wants to save people, and he just gets himself in trouble because he just wants to help others. And then in Trigon Stampede, the place that they're at, they have two plants, right? And one of them is dying. Yeah. And then they ask, oh, Vash, can you help out? And that's where you see him showcasing how much connection he has with the plants and showcasing his intelligence because he can work, operate the machines, the, what is it called? The building, the... Oh, the, the, the ship, the migrant, mm -hmm. the migrant fleet ship, yeah. And the first impression, and this is sort of coming from Meryl's perspective where she first meets Vash, she thinks, who's this guy? And... She just sees him being able to do all these mechanics and something that not many people know how to do. Because it's considered ancient technology. Right. right. Yeah. Because right. at that point, humanity had been stranded on a planet for like 150 years. And you have the people that are still from the migrant fleet, like the engineers and stuff. But they're they're completely separate from the... The, the everyday people that yes. you see. Generations of people who lost their history. Yeah. And are not sure how to operate these ancient ships and such, but they know how to operate the plants. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but besides that, we kind of get an idea that there's something hidden of Vash. From the first episode. And they just reveal things about him. Little by little. Which is different from the original anime. Because you learn more about him. Towards the middle. Yeah. yeah. I mean tonally. The original show is very all over the place. It starts off. As a comedy. 
that doesn't take itself seriously until certain random, well, not really random, but like something would have to be threatening to people around Vash mm-hmm. for him to actually become serious. Mm-hmm. And then they show you that he's got this dark alter ego side to him. Um, but then like you like you said, the midway point, that's when you find out more about him. That's when they introduce knives. Mm-hmm. There's really no build up to knives. It's just one episode. You start seeing the gung ho guns, legato, knives, and etc. So then you you start seeing the tone of the show start to shift, and it goes from villain of the week comedy to dark space western fantasy, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and it just starts getting grim and grim. Like the humor from the show disappears. And it's only 28 episodes or 26 episodes. You're like, it's only 28, 26 episodes. <laughs> but yeah, like, so by episode 13 is when you get everything starting to get darker. Mm-hmm. And when you get to the second half of the show, really the humor is gone. I mean, I think the lightheartedness is maintained by Millie, who's basically the comic relief but even she has her serious moments which again a lot of millie from the original show is anime only it's none of that's from the manga Mm. so speaking of knives they introduced him like you said episode 13 uh 13 14 of the original show and he was introduced in what episode in trigon stampede episode one yeah so in the original anime, they reveal that all these run-ins that Vash has with these villain of the week kind of thing are actually connected to knives. The gung-ho guns. Yeah. And then with Trigon Stampede, it just reveals knives. And he's like, I got plans. I got stuff I want to do. And I got this organization going on. They haven't actually given them a full-on name yet in Stampede. I don't think they've referred to them as the gung-ho guns, but they eventually will. Now, the first thing that they have introduced that they didn't bring up in the original show is the I Am Michael, which is the organization that uh, Wolfwood belongs to and how he became to be what he is. But go ahead. ahead. (laughs) So what I liked about Trigon Stampy is they reveal things little by little and you started seeing the picture the bigger picture of the story Mm -hmm. and then um, when I first saw Knives in the original anime I just thought oh this is a big bad boss but with Trigon Stampy they kind of humanize him in a way where you kind of start to feel bad for him because he doesn't he was an ass in the beginning of Trigon Stampede. It just seemed like he just wanted to kill people. He had plans and he didn't care who <laughs> were going to die. <laughs> he didn't care about the consequences. And then uh, throughout the story, you learn why he is the way he is. And you kind of sympathize with him. And you kind of wonder how come Vash doesn't sympathize with him. It's like I kind of, I kind of started siding with Knives more. That's a common thing. A lot of people are saying they find Vash to be very annoying in this show because Knives makes perfect sense with all of his arguments. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So the arc crashed, right? Mm-hmm. And Vash feels guilty about that because he was involved with that crash and how many years passed by uh from the crash to the beginning of the show yeah 150 years 150 years and it seems like he's trying to 120 technically 120 120 120 years and it seems like he's trying to atone for his sins and that's a lot of time that's a lot of time to mingle with humanity and I understand that Vash is more human compared to Knives. Knives is more plant. He has more abilities while Vash 
He has more human characteristics, like he needs to sleep and eat while nice Ken doesn't need it. Right? Oh, you got a... I, well, I was thinking back to, I was thinking back to, to episode uh, nine when they were when they were bringing all that up. No, no, he does. He needs to, he needs to eat, sleep, and um, they've made it very clear that Knives doesn't have to do any of that. He's he's so independent that he does. He's self sustaining. He does not need to eat. Doesn't need to sleep. And Doctor Conrad, um, mentions that quite often. He's like he's the perfect life form. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And he's trying to make other humans like knives, which is where Wolf would. Wolf comes in. The Eye of Michael and all that, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, uh, that's also something we could dive into. I wish I had thought about that sooner, because you see with Strike, uh, Trigon Stampede, the darkness in a lot of people and it really you know we know the saying the road to hell is paved with good intentions this show really showcases that you see that with vash and his holding on to rim's idealism which really if you really look at it from a psychological perspective it's not even him holding on to it He's just too much of a coward to make a decision. He's a fence sitter. And all his good intentions lead to tragedy. We saw that with the fall. We saw that with the first gung ho gun, Monave the the what is it? Uh Mon I forgot what his name. M Monave the Gale, I think that was his name. Which Monave reversed his venom and his whole design is based on venom because Night Tower is a massive Spider Man and <laughs> so th that's why he was designed that way um so they gave backstory to him which wasn't present in the original manga or the the anime basically he was a kid that vash had found and he was he swore that he was going to protect them and the town and he failed and the boy was um kidnapped and experimented on Mm -hmm. by dr conrad and he ended up becoming monet of the gale and vash failed him and even then when he was suffering and tormented and he mentally broken vash still wouldn't make a decision he's still in a pacifist mindset and then we can look at other characters such as dr conrad who created the eye of michael and was creating all these Experiments such as Wolfwood, Livio, the Double Fang, Roslo, the Tri-Fear or Tri-Terror, um, also creating uh, Ilandera, the Crimson Nail, and all the other people. He is doing these inhumane experiments to ultimately, he even admitted in the last episode, he wanted to create and enhance humanity to the point where they wouldn't need the plants mm -hmm. but you also see that yes he had good intentions but he was so morally bankrupt with his pursuit of trying to do what he thought was the right thing that he became the very evil that he was fearful of with knives mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then they go further in depth with that you find out about tesla who then technically named in the show but it's her name is tesla which is vash and i's uh, older sister the first independent and you find out how you know well they don't really dive into it in the show but in the manga you find out that basically the people the fleet they didn't know what she was that she's the first independent and they decide to you know because she wasn't human they didn't have to deal with the morality and ethics of chopping up for all intents and purposes, a child experimenting on her mm -hmm. and doing all kinds of things, which led to her uh, having, you know, cancer and all types of ulcers. And it's very, very graphically and grotesquely showcased what happened to her in the manga. And 
you find out that Dr. Conrad, Bill Conrad, William Conrad, he has a lot of guilt for allowing that to happen because he was the one who spearheaded that and it led to Tesla dying. And what they did was they cut up her body parts and they put her in three different tubes. And the catalyst for Knives doing what he did was finding, you know, him and Vash finding her on the fleet. And she was still alive. No. No, she was. She, hmm? They said in the anime. Oh, like, I mean, they, well, in the manga, she's dead. In the anime, yes. Yeah, in the anime, they specifically showed on the screen alive. And they showcased the eyeball like it was looking at them, aware that they were there. But she was so far past the point of being able to be, you know, healed that it broke. It mentally broke uh, knives. You could hear and see the anguish of him. You can kind of see him snap to the point where he lost faith in humanity. And he was already indifferent to it because he already knew he was different. He was a plant. He was above humans and such to the point where he kind of jabs at Vash. Constantly. Constantly. Kind of consistently point out how different they are and I feel like from Knives doing that to Vash, Vash felt like he was inferior and had some insecurities in his own way and he's he solely jabbing at his guilt, he knew he felt good yeah and then Vash knew he wasn't human either and he was kind of like, he felt alone, he's like I'm not a plant but I'm not a human either where do I belong? And Rem was his anchor to humanity, while Knives was his anchor to plants. Yeah. And then when the fleet crashed, he lost Rem. And then he found out that Knives is the one who caused the fleet to crash. And so he kind of lost fate in Knives, but he can't separate from him. He, he's pretty dependent on others. Like, even though... He hated knives. He couldn't stop or be away from him. It seems like Vash is dependent on others because when they're on the fleet, all he had was Rem and knives. And when the fleet crashed, he lost Rem. And so he thought, okay, I only have knives. He's my brother. He's my twin. And then when he found out that it was knives that caused the fleet to crash... He hated him. He wanted to kill him, but he couldn't. Why? Because he was dependent on him. He also gave him the navigation information, which caused that. So, Knives always digs into it. You can't hate me. You're just as guilty as I am. You're my accomplice. You're my accomplice. And you see throughout the show how much that torments, like, Vash, and how much... Like, he's so guilt-ridden that instead of accepting his part in all of it, mm -hmm. he thinks, I've got to atone. Which is why he won't heal himself. So. so, even though he can heal himself, he won't. Yikes. Yeah. And then... That's the part that I'm like kind of confused about. He has a sense of guilt, but it doesn't really seem like there were things he could have done to atone for them. Because he's been on this planet for, what, 120 years? Yeah. And what skills has he gained? Tinkering. Gunnery. Is it gunnery? He's able to hold a gun and shoot. He's really good at it. And healing the plants. But it's not really healing. You told me it was something else. And he's talking to the plants. Mm -hmm. that he's able to do that. He, he can inter basically interface with them. But the thing that's interesting, and it goes back to your point, is Knives and Vash are 
geniuses because they can because of the way they are they can figure out how to do basically just about anything which is how like you learn how we learned how Vash got the gun mm-hmm. so we now know how you know through time probably limited time he learned how to become a competent gunsman but he doesn't develop other skills to better anything around him or himself. Right. And the person who always points that out about Vash and his flaws is Wolfwood. Mm. You know. Why do you think that was? Because I think if we just had Vash as he is, he would be a very annoying character. Well, I mean, why did Wolf remind him of that? Is it because he knew his time was limited and he wished he had the abilities as Vash? Because he thought he could have done more? Um, I, I want to mm. say that the reason that Wolfwood is the way he is with the whole situation with Vash is, one, you have to keep in mind, how how old, how old do you think Wolfwood is? Oh, he's a kid, right? So he's like 12. Yeah, so he's roughly like 12 years old. But you also factor in kids are usually susceptible to being on one or two ends of the spectrum. They're very easily influenced. And with him going through all of the things which they showed in detail with how he came to be the Punisher, um, he distrusts adults and people in general. So he's very cynical, but he's also very observant to the point where he can pick up and assess a person, their motivations and stuff like that. He's very observant. So he reads Vash, and Vash is a literal walking contradiction, which Knives (laughs) even calls him out on it. But, you know, Wolfwood calls him out. He's like, you're not trying to do this. How, How are we supposed to get out of this situation? You know this is the best course of action. This is what's needed. But you won't act. You won't act on it, and he always calls him out on that. And it's kind of like having that little devil on the shoulder. I don't want to call Wolfwood a devil. More so, like he's like the devil's advocate. <laughs> you know, big difference. You know, he's like the voice of reason, or he's the logic in the illogicalness of Bash. Mm, mm. So he kind of fills in that void that Rem left. Right. He's the realist in the situation. Mm-hmm. Okay. So in this anime, we see Vash trying to stop knives from killing humanity. And we also have Meryl and Roberts. They are there. Oh, Roberto. You know Roberto, what his, I'm sorry. You, you know what his full name is? What? Robo- Roberto De-, De Niro. What? <laughs> Roberto De Niro. Was that on purpose? <laughs> Nine Tiles is a big fan of Robert De Niro. <laughs> So we see these reporters. They are following Vash, are helping Vash, and they are not a big role. Mero does not have a big role in this, like she did in the original anime. Well, she didn't have a big role in the the manga either. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So she's more of a. If you really want to look at it, we're basically in her shoes, seeing all this calamity. And tragedy follow Vash, and it's like, why? He's not a bad person. Mm-hmm. Why is all these bad things happening? And um, I like Meryl more in this show than I did the last one. The last one, she was annoying. And you know, I got to give it up to, you know, Dorothy Fawn. Amazing performance as Meryl in the 98 original. But her character was, you know, Meryl was just very annoying. Because she's like, you remember, her whole thing was... He can't be the humanoid typhoon. You know, there's that denial, denial, denial. Denial, denial, Until the very end, which was not the case in the manga, and it's not the case in this. She sees what 
what follows him, she doesn't realize what he is. I don't think re they really explicitly show to her or to Roberto what he is. But Roberto, that's depth to him. Mm -hmm. He's like, there are situations where he's just like way more in the know than he should be. He's really quick to pick up on things. I don't know if it was just an instinct he has or tuition or whatever knowledge he had. I don't know what his background was, but when he saw something he kind of recognized on, like subtle details, he kind of goes on guard pretty quick. Yeah. For a drunk, he's not bad. Yeah. <laughs> he's like drunk 90% of the time. But, and that was another thing, a lot of people hated the inc the inclusion of him and the removal of Millie. But a lot of people forget that M uh, Meryl was originally dubbed Derringer Millie, uh, Der Derringer Meryl, because she had like rows of Derringers that she would pull out. Mm -hmm. They never gave background as to how she got them, why she was the expert like uh, a gunsman or gunswoman or anything like that. Now they, they did a lot of hinting at her background that she was running from something or not facing some type of familial issue. And I was always on, I'm like, is Roberto her father? No, because he always called her newbie. And she's like, I have a name. So it's probably, bigger than that I, well i'm i'm just saying i mean they could he could be probably not but i mean they kept putting an emphasis on the fact that she's running away from something or she allowed something tragic to happen in her past mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so i i just put two and two together and say hey he could be her dad <laughs> which would add a lot of gravity to his death right he died. And so that's where I was thinking, yeah, Millie's going to come. Because I always had a feeling that this was a prequel. Just based off of Meryl being a newbie. Yeah. And I was thinking, yeah, this this is a prequel. And um, July was still around. And so I always had a feeling that Millie was going to come back later on. And I was thinking that Roberto was her dad. Because they kind of look alike. Like they had the same bangs. But I don't, I don't think that was Millie's dad. <laughs> I don't think so. I think they're like totally separate people. And they just needed a character that had a great impact on Meryl to the point where it changes her life and gives her identity to what we see from the original anime. Yeah. I mean, that would be interesting if it... I doubt it because... Millie knows well if I don't know how they're gonna go about her in this in this one, but Millie is like one of like nine or eleven kids and she knows her parents. <laughs> you know, and like she yeah, like it, it's It was a thought. I never said it out loud until now because like I wasn't even sure. I was like, No way, they wouldn't do that. <laughs> no. I, yeah, I mean, you know, you, you never know. But I'm voicing it out now because I want to share with everybody else. I'm like thinking, I'm not the only one who thought that. <laughs> I'm not alone in this. But besides that, I also liked seeing the people in Knives organization. The other characters. What was that one? The The girl. Oh, Elandra, the uh, the crimson nail. Yeah, the we half only... human, half plant. Yeah, so we saw a little bit of her in the beginning, and we immediately knew she looked like them. She looked like Vash and Eyes, and then they show more of her towards the end of the season. She is a badass, and she seems a little psychotic, which is a complete. 180 from what she is in the manga. Really? Because 
Legato. So she's stronger than Legato. Mm -hmm. So she's the strong. She's the 13th gung ho gun that doesn't have a number. 13th, no number. Yeah. Yeah. So she's the the 13th gung ho gun. She's stronger than Legato Blue Slummers. She has psychic abilities. Plus, um, in the manga, Legato is the one who's unhinged and acting the way she was. Mm hmm. She was crazy, but level-headed. <laughs> she was like the one to put Legato in check. Mm. Whereas in this one, it's like she's way younger. I think they're going to do, with the time skip, I think they're going to show her older. But she, um, she's very unhinged in, in Stampede. Huh, that kind of makes me think that they purposely showcased her to show her immaturity because she's a kid in this season. <laughs> what she said to Meryl, how dare you have pity on me. <laughs> yeah, and then she knows that people kind of judge her for being a child. And so she says that to Meryl, how dare you pity me because I'm a kid. And then when she gets hurt, she's like, how dare you hurt a child? And it's like, you double standard bitch. <laughs> and then like, she's got fang teeth, yo. Every time when I see fang tooth women, I'm like, ooh, you crazy. <laughs> Yeah, like, just. <laughs> I think she's manipulative, but this also showcases that she's really young and immature. And probably in season two or season three, they're going to show her development and how she grows or blooms. I don't know. Bloom sounds like a positive thing. Grow just means she's growing. <laughs> Why you laugh? Well, I'm laughing because it's like... Because? Since she's half human, half plant, and plants can develop and grow rapidly. Like, when we first saw Vash and Knives in the beginning of the, the show with Ren, they were only a year old. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. But they looked like, what, teenage, preteens. So, she was grown in a test tube. I think with this time skip, they'll give her an adult form. Oh, for sure. And maybe they'll give her her coffin that she carries. Well, no, she carries a suitcase around it, and that's how she is able to uh, do all her stuff. But in this one, she can just materialize it out of thin air. I'm interested in seeing how they're going to pull that off. Ah, I see, I see, I see. And that's the arc that knives becomes so hmm. there's other stuff you want to cover too there is there's so much there's a lot there's a lot because like what i have to say with like this show is they are doing very well at building up Mm -hmm. oh especially with that last episode towards the end Yo, po the with the post credit scene. <laughs> uh huh, uh huh. <laughs> and then, okay, so this was maybe in the middle of the season where Vash is rescued and he goes to his home, mm -hmm. and they kind of do some backstory. And it's when he was discovered by what Fleet Number Three, mm -hmm. and uh, one of the characters said, "Oh, he's an independent, you know, independence." And then Amigas think, wait, you know about independence? I thought Vash and Knives and Tesla, right, Tesla, were yeah. the only ones. But apparently there were other independents that were known. And so that kind of planted a seed. Mm-hmm. And then, like, post credits of the last episode of the season, they're like, Chronica! And a lot of people are like, who? <laughs> Ooh. Like yeah, she's she's initially more powerful than knives. Her alone is able to. If knives didn't doesn't merge with other plants, she can kill him easily. So we kind of just jumped forward there, 
Uh, what I really want to talk about is Knives' plan. What, why he did all these things. Why he was taking plants away from cities. Why he was working with the doctor. Why he was building these humans as his soldiers and such. And his plan was to get all the plants and make them all into independence. And he wanted, he needed Vash's help with that. He needed to open the gate to go to the higher dimension. They don't really fully delve as to his plan of what he is getting. Now, you can assume that him going to the higher dimension, he's reaching to God or some type of was, higher being. It was the core, the core of life, right? The core, in that case, yes. The origin of life. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And in that scene where Vash kind of, what, becomes like a, like a stone? A husk, yeah. A husk. He becomes a husk, and, like, he has, like, these tendrils connecting to all the plants that was in the area, and then the plants bloom, and they have, like, a bulb. Yeah, he impregnated them. Yeah! And it was, he was kind of freaky looking it's like first i'm thinking okay why do the plants kind of have like humanoid features it's like kind of creepy and now they look pregnant and they're supposed to give birth to independence oh, straight from the manga <laughs> and, and it's like oh this is kind of <laughs> freaky and such and knives and the doctor are kind of controlling bash because they was it called they infected him they invaded his brain his system so they could control mm -hmm. his abilities to impregnate <laughs> the plants so they could give birth to independence because plants are predominantly female mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and so we see knives going into this dimension thing and he's trying to erase memories from Vash's mind, memories that connect him to humans, to humanity, to make him more like a plant. I have a look. What? I have a look. Yeah, look. Remember that meme I showed you? It's like, Vash, I will reveal to you. <laughs> and I showed the Sims. <laughs> <laughs> like, let me take you to create a character. <laughs> I'm going to give you this. <laughs> and they showed a lot of symbolism because his memories they would suddenly bloom into these red flowers and they would just fade away in petals and uh, each of his memories were erased little by little mm -hmm. and it got to a point where it goes down to the core of his memories as a child where it's just him and knives are good memories and it's sort of like Knives is manipulating him to think that they had a good time. And, and that the things Knives was saying were actually what Rem was saying. Mm -hmm. That was a trigger. Mm -hmm. And it's sort of like he was trying to make Vash dependent on him again. To the point where he can control him. Mm -hmm. And it kind of made me think, does Knives regret saying the stuff he did in the past. Like, does he wish he had he was more of a positive reinforcement for him? Does he wish that him and Bash had a better relationship? You know, like, does he have his own regrets and he's trying to rectify them? And by making more independence, he's also filling in that void for Vash so Vash doesn't feel so alone. But in actuality, he was just trying to be free and he could feel the pain of the plants and he thought the plants deserve some freedom too and be independent. But he knew if humans knew that there are a lot of independents, they would try to use and destroy the other independents. So he was like, well, I need to kill off humanity so we can exist and not get killed off. It's an ugly cycle. Like, when you really break down Knives' plan, 
yes, he's a villain. Yes, he's basically one to do planetary genocide. Mm hmm. <sighs> it's all about plants versus humans. I'm not trying to sympathize with the genocidal monster, but he makes a very compelling case. Mm-hmm. Because they show nothing but fucked up humans. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And every time Nice uh, Vash is like, "Well, humans, this," but he, I'm just like, <laughs> "You're like, but Nice makes the point." And Nice has been planning for years. He's been working up to this. And what has Vash been doing? Which he calls him out in that last episode. He's like, after a century, this is the best you can go Oh, I resonate with Nice on that. I'm like, I fuse you, bro. <laughs> Which, even in that, even in that scene where, like, Vash activates, he, Vash intends, because he, he takes the power, when, I think, from the core, which is what that cube turns into. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And he grows a wing, which he has in a manga. He flies off into the air. Knives takes chase. And he intends to release that energy because he can't contain it. You know. Uh, it's unstable. Yeah. It's un- what he did was he took that. Well, like that dimension of void, and he condensed it into yeah a into like a crystal cube, but it's not stable. I forget the term. There's a scientific term where like when energy it has to be released, it can't be contained. I, for y'all science buffs, y'all can figure that out. But there need there it needs to circulate somehow. If there's no is movement, thermodynamics. No. I'm not a scientist, so I ain't going to answer that. <laughs> She's an agriculturist, so that's what that is. Anyway, um, so basically he needs to fire it off. Release it. Release it. So he goes into above the planet, into the atmosphere, into space. He fires it off, thinking that would be it. Mm-hmm. This again goes back to the road to hell, paved with a whole lot of good intentions. He fires it. Knives does try to stop him. But Knives is not why when he falls back down to the earth. And it goes. Or not the earth. Uh, playing gun smoke. Falls back to the planet. Nuclear reaction. Yeah. It's like a nuclear bomb. There is a mushroom smoke. That wasn't Knives. No. Which is interesting, if you look back on it, like, that exact event that played out in the original anime, Nice is who triggered it. Mm. Remember, he activated... Because their power was in the gun in the original mm-hmm. show. Knives activated it, which basically removes the onus from Vash. In this one, Vash did it. He just didn't think it through, which is what a lot of people are annoyed with that. And he don't think shit through very well. You know, I was thinking about as he was releasing the energy, it was pushing him down, propelling him more. And instead of gravity just pulling him down, he was also being pushed down at a very high acceleration, mm-hmm. which created that big impact when he landed on the planet because he was still shooting up the yeah so, so it accelerated it so is he in, in the best way to look at it is as soon as he hit the ground he's still shooting that beam out mm. and that beam just evaporated killing hundreds of thousands if not millions of people so and then when you see the next scene of him where they do the two-year time skip and they show him as Eric's, which is the persona he took on to run away from the responsibility of what he did. Um, they visually showed how broken he was. Mm-hmm. Feeling guilty again, but he he kind of deserved to be guilty because 
You know, after living for so long, you would think he would have a better plan from releasing that energy and such. Mm-hmm. What? But this is necessary for story. If he was very intelligent, if he could think things through, predict things, think of the consequences, the story would end quite quickly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's basically the classic tragic hero where everything he does ultimately doesn't work out the way he intends it. And he causes more chaos than he causes a resolution. Mm-hmm. And so... Everyone else is a vehicle for him to eventually come to, one, accept responsibility for what he's done, two, accept the guilt he has for choices he made, but accept that they have been made, move on. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, and I mean, you could say that that's for real life. That's a real life thing. A lot of us go through life with this assumed idea of how things should be. And then we clash with the reality of what it is. And we can not accept it for what it is. Which causes more pain (laughs) overall. But, you know, at some point you got to accept things and move forward. Mm -hmm. And the the big journey for for Vash, and they're, they're really showing it more in this one than they did in the 98 anime, is... He needs to make his own decision and come up with what he feels personally is worth believing in, worth fighting for, worth killing for, worth continuing on. Because right now, he's just a a walking mass of guilt that Mm -hmm. doesn't know how to move on. He needs to get over it. But I don't think he can. Not yet, anyway. No. You know, I just thought of this. I keep... I'm stuck on the thought that he's lived for so long. And he's only come that far. I'm like wondering, what did you do that whole time? Sympathize with humans? Mingling with them? Feeling compassion for them more and more? To the point where you're like... You're like, I have to save them. They're powerless. I'm powerful. I can do it. It's it's so annoying. But (laughs) at the same time, does that mean he kind of had a disconnect with them? Because after destroying July, killing a lot of people, by his own hands, by his own hands, not because of someone else, not not because of indirectly, it was by his own hands, it kind of snaps him to reality. It's like, hey, these are real people. Mm-hmm. You are involved with them. You change their lives. You can do something about it. And he's kind of lost on that. And that's where we see him at the end of the season, where he's kind of lost. It's like, I have all this power, but all I do is destroy. And it's like, please turn that around. Yeah. Bring that energy and make it proactive. Yeah. It's like, can you please? <laughs> and so I feel like in season two, we're going to see more of him and kind of identity searching in more ways than than one and he's gonna have people who are deeply connected with him now so we got wolfwood we got meryl uh the family that he's staying with the girl that falls in love with him mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which in the original show she was a adult in the manga she's actually a 13 year old girl that's still an adult in that kind of world. Okay, I'm glad you clarified that. Hey, I was like, hey, I was like, you're like, excuse you, excuse. <laughs> Say what? <laughs> <laughs> but in that those eyes, in that world, that's an adult. 
I mean, but besides that, besides also, that. I mean, also in the Wild West, that would be considered. Yeah, but. yeah. So I'm ex- I'm anticipating season two, and how many seasons you said there should be? Now that I think about it, it should be four seasons. Four seasons. There needs to be four seasons. Like four seasons. If we're gonna do twelve episodes, and they're basically going to be adapting all of Trigun Maximum. Mm-hmm. You need four ep- four seasons. Okay, I'll break this down. Break as, it down as quickly and efficiently as I can. Um. Okay. Season one, prequel prologue. Basically, the original Trigun manga setting up everything that is the whew, the experience that is Trigun Maximum. So, um, we can have this season. Season two, I think, should be spending the most time with. Vash under his guise of being Eric's and him coming to terms with decisions he's made, people that have been hurt or killed. And we need to have that time with Wolfwood. The original anime, he didn't have that. There wasn't Wolfwood wasn't in the show for very long. Uh, The manga gives Wolfwood and Vash a lot of time together. They really become like brothers. Mm-hmm. He becomes the the surrogate of, or the not the surrogate, but he. Rec- I guess that would be the surrogate brother. He becomes a replacement for knives, and he is the brother and best friend that Vash needs. Mm. So you have an extended period of time with Wolfwood. And their conflicting ideologies, but even with their conflicts and differences of opinion, they still are friends. They're still best friends. They're still like brothers. Mm -hmm. And so what changes Vash's decision on inaction is Wolfwood's death. Now, if we're going to go with how this season killed off Roberto, season two needs to kill off Wolfwood. And I think we need to... We need to have that time. So give us, like, maybe six or seven episodes of Bash's Eric's and his trials and tribulations and then deciding to come back and be Vash the Stampede. Then we can go to him fighting some of the gung ho guns, which ultimately ends in him not saving Wolfwood from Chapel and the Eye of Michael, who end up ultimately killing Wolfwood. Mm-hmm. I need the couch scene. I need my heart torn out, stepped on, shit on, pissed on, set on fire, because that's how bad that hurt reading and seeing how they did that. Oh. So I need that pain. It makes me feel alive. So they need that. Season three also needs to be where you start to see the relationship and friendship and brotherhood between Livio the Double Fang and Vash the Stampede happen. Because they have a lot of time together. So you need to have that, and you also need to have Vash actively going after the gung-ho guns. Mm. Because the death of Wolfwood is the catalyst for Vash to say, fuck it, I'm going after you guys. I'm stopping you. You aren't my brother anymore. You took someone who was like a brother. Mm. Because the manga showcases Wolfwood's death gravely hurt bash in the way that losing rim hurt them. Mm, mm. So we need that. We also need additional time. So we also need additional time to have Legato have his, you know, because one, I think I've said this before we recorded, Knives needs to be out of the picture until maybe the end of season two. Because he needs to be recuperating, trying to regenerate his body. And that's going to take time. So yeah. Legato steps in. He runs the gung-ho guns. He's hell-bent on killing Vash because he's got this weird love and obsession 
Queen Sang with freaking knives. So we need to have that time where Legato can just go crazy and he goes out of his way to try and kill Vash. We need to also have the subplot where uh, Mid Valley the Horn Freak and um, God damn it, I can't think of his name. Uh, Hopper, uh, Hopper, the, the, the something, Hopper, I can't think of the rest of his name, but Hopper and Mid Valley the Horn Freak basically go against the gung-ho guns to try and get away from them and Legato, and ultimately they get killed, but they need to have that because that gives a lot of context as to not everyone's along with knives's plan or legato's plan Mm -hmm. and one of the things with the 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 manga now i initially interpreted it this way but hopper the you know i'm I'm looking up his name as i'm talking i'm gonna keep talking but um (laughs) hopper basically he was a um yeah hopper the gauntlet that's his name gauntlet so his body was fully contorted to being that. Ooh. Ooh. Um, so Hopper basically was a someone who he's paraplegic, and he got around by wheeling himself with his arms on this cart to get around. And he was a homeless, but very kind and compassionate, and just loving soul. And he was taking care of this blind, mute woman who looked a lot like Tesla. Oh. Well, I initially thought that was Tesla. But, you know, they need to build it up because you see he was close to killing Vash in the manga. Not in the anime, but in the manga, he was hella close to killing uh, Vash the Stampede. And he constantly said what Vash did by taking away, you know, the woman. Because when the whole event of July, mm-hmm. she died in that. Uh. And Hopper had left the city to go get something for her to help her. Oh. And she died in it. And he, he loved her. And so they need time to develop that. That can be the second half of season two. And then season two can end, like I said, one, the death of Wolfwood, two, the return of Knives, and three, with Knives stepping in right before Legato can kill Vash and saying to him, who the hell are you to try and kill him? I never gave that order. You disgusting piece of human trash, which is what he said to him. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And what he does is he telepathically cripples. Like, you saw what Legato did to Wolfwood. Yeah. Knives does worse than that to Legato's body. Mm -hmm. So then Legato gets put in a, uh, an iron, uh, maiden, iron maiden, and he's carried around by a golem Mm. or a golem. So. Season three can be Legato in that form, but he's more knives doing that. He takes it as a sign of, oh, he loves me. Uh. And he goes further insane to the point where Elandra, the the Crimson Nail, is like, you step out of line, I'm killing you. (laughs) That's not what Master Knives wants. You know it. Mm. Back up. Um, they need to have him going full batshit crazy and to the point where eventually when he does recover it, you know, recuperate his body, that can be the end of season three. And then we show that he's got way more powerful to the point of being nearly on the level of knives. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so we need to have him at the return. That can be season three. Season three should be Vash actively hunting the gung-ho guns knives become you know absorbing all the plants becoming the arc that he is 
and basically him and Kronika at the cusp of going to war with one another. Season four needs to be Kronika Knives interplanetary war that needs to be that needs to happen. Yeah. We we need to see that because that shit was wild. <laughs> it, it was so wild as I was reading it back in the day, and when I recently went and reread it, I was like, "Yo, I'm like, yo, I'm like, I don't know, Vash. I don't know. I don't know if you could, <laughs> man. You know, you know what, you know what, Knives was doing to Vash because Vash went up against Knives multiple times and lost. He lost multiple times." Knives is like, hey, hey, brother, here you go. It's called humble pie. Eat all of that. <laughs> he humbled him repeatedly, and I'd like to see that happen. And he's humbling him fully, not really even paying attention to Kronika as they're warring. Mm. Um. So we need to have that. Then we need to have the showdown between El- El- Elendira or Elendra, however the hell you say her name. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> you need to have let me look her name up again. I, I know I keep fucking that name up. Elinda Ellen uh Elindira the Crimson Nail and uh Livio the Double Fang as well as Roslo the Triponisher of Death. Now I don't think I showed you what Roslo looks like fully. No, you didn't. <clears throat> All I heard was a third arm. Ugh. Yeah. So they need to show the fight between the two of them, which goes crazy, especially when you see uh, Elendra's true form. Yikes. Yikes. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to that. That'll be what? Season four, you said? Should pre- be season four. That should be season so four. So while that's going on, you need to have Vash versus uh, Legato, which is... Holy fuck. <laughs> and at the same time, Vash versus Legato, Vash is fighting Knives. Who Knives is fighting Kronika. Who <laughs> Kronika's trying to wipe out all of them because Kronika's partner, aka kind of sort of lover, Vash, uh, uh, Knives kind of took from Kronika. Ooh, damn. Ain't, ain't nothing like a woman. He'll have no fear like a woman's scorn. <laughs> so... <laughs> We need that in full effect. <laughs> full on. I want to see this. Now. You're like, do not look this up. Do not mess that up. <laughs> now, I want to see also the them implement Vash's automated defense system, which kills and destroys anything that comes near him. Implemented in season four. I also want to see the slow redemption of knives to the point where they fully showcase it when he saves a child. Ah. And his death where he grows a tree to produce fruit for this child and his father as his act of redemption. Hmm. But I want a better ending than, oh yeah, Vashes goes off to become the 60 trillion billion, the 60 trillion double dollar man. Hmm. Ain't nobody paying that. Ain't nobody got that kind of money. <laughs> just saying. I it just, I want, if you're going to adapt it, it doesn't need to be one to one because I'd be honest, trying to follow the panels is actually kind of difficult. Oh, but, really? Yeah. It is very difficult. Anyone who's read Trigon Maximum, shit's happening. You over here like <laughs> Anyways. I want a better ending. Either kill off Vash or put him in a point where he has a limited lifespan. Ooh, what if he sacrifices himself and that helps rejuvenate the planet? You know? Possibly. Yeah? I mean, he already self-sacrifices himself. Some people probably want him to have a love angle with Meryl, but that was anime only also. Nah. No need. 
No need. I don't think so. If you think so, let us know. <laughs> I don't think so. But yeah, that, that's literally uh, it's literally all I, I had. Nice, yeah. nice. I love your predictions and how it should play out. In four seasons, last time we talked, it was three. Now it's four. Ooh. I mean, if we're gonna do the twenty, the twelve episode format that most anime is going with. That's what I would want. I mean, honestly, I'd be, feel even better if we went 20 episodes a season. I think this show, as much of a success as it's been for something that was in the works for five and a half years, ah. I think they've gotten to a point where this has done so well, it blew Crunchyroll's expectations. Mm-hmm. This was... I don't want to say it was the, the show of the season, it was up there. It was up there. It, it was very much up there. And, you know, I want to throw this out there. To any of you mofos out there, they're like, this ain't Trigon because it ain't the old anime. Well, shit, your old anime ain't canon either. <laughs> so, shut up. C- turn on Crunchy World. Pay for the subscription. Or just go on the website and use Ad Blocker And watch it. Because, one, this ain't a situation of the studio, Studio Orange just got the rights to it from Night Towel. Night Towel wrote this because he hated the original 98 anime. He wrote this. And, and artists are allowed to redo their work. You know, Attack on Titan is a Good example. Yeah. Y'all gonna be disappointed when that show ends. <laughs> hey, I'm 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 telling you from two years in, in, in the past. <laughs> I know where it's going. Hell ain't gonna like it. But anyways. <laughs> so you're very excited that Naito is involved. It is being true to the story because it's very close to the creator. Yeah, I mean, for a story that man has been, you know, from 1995 to wrapping it up in, in 2008 and having to deal with stuff that just wasn't canon. And every time he goes to a convention and people are telling him about the show and he's like, oh, you, did you read the manga? No. <laughs> I'd have a chip on my shoulder too, about the size of Texas. Like, l- listen, you bitches, y'all about to watch. Y'all about to know my story. <laughs> Gonna pull up all in their faces through Crunchy Rail. <laughs> so anyway, that's all I got. That's all I got. Watch the show if you haven't already. It is amazing. Um, it's a very good story, very compelling, very emotional, very emotional. Um, and it's still Vash. Vash is still him. You just don't have the villain of the week, which is something people anime did back then. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They don't do that anymore. They ain't got time to make you wait. Like, like, can you imagine if Dragon Ball Z came out now? Oh. <laughs> I don't think it would survive. <laughs> uh, Dragon Ball is surviving for so long because of generations of fans. Yeah. So. With that being said, is there anything else we want to talk about on this? No, I think I talked about everything I wanted to say, and you have brought up a lot of stuff that I'm surprised. Yeah. So, all that being said, people, if you enjoyed this episode of Paw, make sure you like it. If you're watching it on YouTube, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, and comment down below. Let's let's start some theory crafting. That's something... Like, give us some shit to work with. We're going to do some more episodes on this. Season two is going to be coming out. They This been confirmed. They call it Final Phase, which a lot of people are assuming that's going to be one final season. No, I want 
three more. Final phase, yes. Final phase being three seasons. Mm -hmm. So give us more. Uh, give us something to talk about. If there's any questions you guys would like us to, you know, discuss in future episodes when we round about on this, or if you want us to cover another anime and, and give us, you know, some topics to talk about, definitely let us know. Or if you're listening to it on any of the major podcasting outlets, Amazon Music, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you listen to your podcast, then make sure you follow the podcast. You leave a rating, leave a review or comment or interact on a poll or whatever the hell the outlet you use has and just give us feedback because the show can only get better with the feedback that you guys give us. We can get all the technical hoo-hahs and the cameras and the, the background bokeh effects and, and the interfaces and all this shit, but if y'all ain't listening, then what does it do? <laughs> Thank you, Mikael. So you guys can find us all over all social media platforms. For me, at Lehua Superfina, and for Mikael, at... Mikael Casanova across the board. You can't miss it. I'm all everywhere but the hub. <laughs> Thank you guys for listening. Keep reading manga, keep watching anime, and keep listening to podcasts across worlds. We'll see you on the next one. Laters!